Hey FlossTube, my name is Sarah. I'm from Memphis and this is my channel about cross stitch. This is FlossTube number six for me. Today is Tuesday, June the 29th and that is a big deal. And let me tell you why it's a big deal. It is a big deal because I almost made my two week goal. This is coming to y'all two weeks and one day after my last FlossTube. So I'm feeling really good about that. Um, I really, probably shouldn't be making this floss tube today because I'm um, leaving to go visit my mom and stepdad in Iowa in the morning and I have like five million things to do probably literally um, but I really wanted to get this done before I went out of town and I have plenty to show and plenty to talk about so um, let me just get started what have I been up to the last couple weeks or we've been up to the last couple weeks just enjoying the summer um, here, loved, have loved, loved hearing all about all the fun everyone's had at StitchCon. I cannot wait to go next year. I am so excited. I've talked to Jessica from down Allison Road about it. Zan, crazy fan lady. Um, even I even just chatted for a second with a uh, message with Rocio. Um, Milka from Mega Stitches. So many people that had such a great time um, and plan to go or, you know, hoping to go back next year. And I hope I get to meet everyone, see everyone. Um, I've started taking some notes. I know. Um, well, I guess I should rewind a little bit. Not everybody probably knows about StitchCon. StitchCon is a convention put on by Keepsakes Cross Stitch. That's out of Cincinnati. Um, you might know Pam and Steph from Just Keep Stitching. Um, they're on the Keepsakes uh, StitchCon team. Um, Steph is actually an employee of Keepsakes and what they do is um, they host a stitching retreat that is for um, floss tubers and stitchers. And so it's super cool. You get to see a lot of floss tubers and um, spend the weekend doing fun cross stitch retreats things, which I've never been to a retreat before. So, um, it's been really nice. So you've seen, if you just like Google or whatever in your YouTube and, you know, put in StitchCon 2021, people who have attended have posted videos and, um, it's really, really cool. One of the, my favorite things, uh, Pam and Steph just keep stitching, did a really, really nice StitchCon recap and they put in like, I think it's about maybe 15 minutes worth of video from the brag table and I'm just was like blown away I'm already like what can I take to the brag table I mean the stuff is amazing that people have put on there and they've just I can't wait to see that in person I really can't you know things look so different when you're looking at the chart or the pictures or even just what I'm showing you on video um I, I was literally watching the video footage from the bride table going, oh, oh, I love that one. Oh, you know, trying to figure out what it is, what you want, and then being able to recognize some of the more popular pieces or even just recognize designers. Um, that was really fun too. So if you're at all interested, go on in your YouTube search and just put in StitchCon 2021 and maybe you'll decide to go next year and um, we'll see you. Maybe I'll get to meet you. Um, so anyway, that was a complete tangent. <laughs> I'm trying to get ready to go out of town. I wanted to get this floss tube filmed. Um, I have a lot of plans coming up in the next week. It's kind of like the end of the month, the beginning of the month, stitching plans, um, stitch along starts. I had to stop by my LNS stitchers in Memphis yesterday and pick up a little bit of floss. And of course, I might have found a piece of fabric I couldn't do without, maybe a chart I couldn't do without. Anyway, I talked briefly with Jan, who is the owner of stitchers, and um, spoke to her about a little stitching get together for stitchers in our area. Zan, a crazy band lady on, I keep calling her the crazy band lady. I mean, I wouldn't call her that crazy band lady, but that's her name on FlossTube. Uh, she started a Facebook group for us called 901 Stitchers. So if you are in our area at all, um, come check out our Facebook group. We would love to have you. We are working on getting together some stitchy get togethers at our LNS in the afternoons on Saturdays. Probably not going to start till August or September because everybody's so bit busy with vacations and trips to the lake and stuff. But that will be coming your way soon. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what's been going on. I do have my Winnie here today, but alas, she's not going to make an appearance again because best friend is here. And I have a mess going. Like, I have piles everywhere. And right now, best friend's giving me the side eye on the recliner trying to get comfy because I'm, I'm talking. You might have just heard her sigh. Uh, yeah, so um, um, let's see. That's pretty much it. 
Oh, last night, last night I got to go out to dinner with some friends, my husband and my son and I. We went out with, we have a kind of a, a friend group that stemmed from my son and his friends and their family um, that we've just, they all went to elementary school together and um, we've, we've all kept in touch. We're all really, really good friends. So it was really fun last night. It was nice to see everyone. Um, my friend Chi was there. You might have remembered me talking about going to the beach with Chi and um, she started stitching her first piece. Um, so I asked her for a stitchy update and um, she said she had some questions, but um, you know, uh, she just said the holes are so small. So she's working on 14 count Ada. Um, you know, I just, you know, she just wanted, had a question about whether I really skip around in a pattern or how you have to do it. Is there a rule about doing it? And I just kind of explained, you know, if you do things that are connected, um, you know, then you have less chance of miscounts. Um, and her piece, I don't know if I ever showed it to you, which I don't have it to show to you, but it's a butterfly and like half of it's a butterfly and half of the butterfly is made out of flowers. It's by Vlada X Stitch on Etsy. I think if you just type in butterfly cross stitch on Etsy, even Vlada X Stitch, you'll see it. It's really cute. So hers is, I mean, it's not a big full coverage piece, but it's basically like a lot of things are very connected. So um, I just told her I would do things that are connected to kind of make sure I didn't miscount. And, um, you know, just recommended some good light and some, and she used my readers at the beach. So she probably needs to get some readers to, to help her out on that. But I did take heart in knowing that she has uh, attempted a little more work on it since she's been home. So that's good to know. We might have a future a future stitcher she keeps with it um yeah so i am going to iowa in the morning i'm super excited about that while we're there um i'm gonna get to hopefully i haven't checked the holiday hours but the stitchery nook in osage is not too far from where um i'm gonna be so as long as they're open i'm planning to go make a stop and check it out and i'm excited about it i have ordered online from them before my mom uh, for christmas that was a christmas present was like a gift or not a gift certificate but whatever she was like you know i had intended to go for thanksgiving and then we couldn't because of covid so we were going to make a shopping trip and that was going to be my birthday present um so i have ordered online from them before and they were great and everything was packaged really nice and um yeah so i'm excited to get to see it in person as long as the holiday holiday hours and my visit our visit um you know work out okay speaking of packages i sent a package to keepsakes yesterday i am so excited i don't know if any of y'all have ever had any of your stuff finished professionally finished um but i sent a little package of some goodies to be finished and um yeah i can't wait i'm i'm super i'm super excited about it to see these when they get back uh some of them i wasn't like dying to have finished but i'm like well you know i'm already sending these up there so i might as well send it all so um yeah i am i'm, I'm super excited about it so of course when i get those back um i did message them and i i Pretty sure I was talking to Steph because I think she's um, in charge of their Instagram account. But she said the turnaround time is about a month or so. So I've asked for a couple of pillows and a couple of um, flat folds. So yeah, I'm just, I'm really looking forward to that. Okay, so speaking of finishes, I do have a finish that I got completed in these last couple weeks. I want to start with that. Um, I have been at Cross Stitch Camp this month. So Cross Stitch Camp, if you're not familiar with it, is something being hosted by the Colorado Stitcher. If you'll go to her floss tube number 12, she has all the details there. Um, but basically, you'll choose a project at the beginning of the month. You take a picture, post it on Instagram. She makes You tag her in it. She makes note of it. And then you have to complete or finish your um, piece for the month by the end of the month. Not fully finish, just complete all the stitching portions. So the piece that I chose it was a Starry Night by Bothy Threads. Um, we were supposed to choose a piece that um, you were inspired to stitch. So I knew that I wanted to get some Halloween stitching done this summer. I just wasn't really sure how I was gonna work it into my current plans. And um, I purchased this kit and I say I was inspired by Sean of Craftivating Creations. She's a floss tuber also. She uh, stitches a lot of Bothy Threads kits. Um, more so like the Rendale kits with the super cute bunnies and stuff on them. I, I love those, I haven't done one yet. But when I saw this, um, I thought, oh gosh, she's always, she really likes these. So I thought I would give, give it a 
try. And I, I really enjoyed it. It was a great kit. It came with a fabric, a needle, all of the thread that you needed, um, a few specialty threads, and some little sequins for the stars. I actually had so much of everything left except for the fabric that I've repackaged it back up, even with the little stars. Um, and I'm going to save it for a freebie table or when I go to a retreat or maybe a giveaway on the channel, just because like it's, you, you could, you could stitch this again out of what they sent you. So let's go on and show you the finish. It's very small, but there we are. Oh, and very see-through. Let me see. Will that help? Yeah, so it's very small. So I talked this about this last time about how I was really struggling stitching this in hand and my hand was cramping up and everyone was so helpful and they were like, I mean, I thought, duh, after I read those comments about there being hoops this small, I didn't go get anything because I felt like I was so close and um, for the future, I probably will get something. But um, it was really hard to stitch this in hand. It was really hard to back stitch this thing in hand and look at the back stitching on this. Like, it, they just looked like little blobs without the back stitching. So, um, yeah, I did that. And this is like um, a shiny, it's, it's like this, this stuff is like tinsel. It's like stitching with Christmas tinsel. It was splitting and making a mess everywhere. So, I mean, it turned out okay, but I was like, I don't know about this stuff. Um, I did make one little change in the pattern. Well, you can't really see it in the pattern, but... Um, Halloween was spelled a little differently than we do spell it here in the United States. It was like Halloween and then like a apostrophe and, um, oh my gosh, grammar's coming to back to haunt me. That's what you call it, right? Yeah. And then E-N, like Halloween, I don't know, but, um, I didn't do that because that's really just not what we're familiar with here. Um, and it's going to be displayed here. So, uh, anyway, I thought it was cute. Um, probably when I get all of my Halloweens from Cross Stitch Camp done for the summer, I'll probably send them to Keepsakes and get something done with them. Maybe because I do have some items for finishing, but it's not my forte and um, I would like to enjoy them and not hide them in the, under the bed box. So, um, oh, and this is the bag it was living in. This is my Tennessee bag from Garon uh, Stitchery, Garon Totem Bags. Anyway, it's great. Okay, so I got a finish. Yay! Um, oh, okay, I've got something in my chunk it away area. Yeah, okay. All right, so stitch alongs. All right, so I'm involved in three monthly stitch alongs. I do the Dark Queen of the Sea by Autumn Lane Stitchery, um, the Christmas Wreath by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery, and the Stitching Book Club, whatever book we're working on, which we're working on Little Women right now. So let's start with my Dark Queen. Now, I talked about her a couple weeks ago, and not to disappoint, but she is not coming out of the Q-Snap this time. Um, if you really want to see her, if you go back to, I think probably all of my other videos, I do show her in her full glory. But I have really got to take care of some business with her. So, this is where we are. Um... This is the releases. This is released once a month. And this is all the way through. This is the June release, which was... No, this is not the June release. Hold up. Sorry for the zip, guys. June release. This is the June release, right? So it was like a continuation of her tentacles, like in this. And we're about to have a July release. And my goal, two weeks ago was to get all of this, because I was probably like up in here, get all of this finished before the July 1st release. Okay, so I'm not gonna meet my goal, but I have had some progress. So i um, just gonna keep on pushing, keep, just keep swimming. <laughs> so here we go. Uh, you can't see all the way up there, but I've done like, I've done a lot of stitching, y'all. This, the May portion alone was over 5,000 stitches. I do not know how many stitches were in this in the continuation of the tentacles. So um, I'm just gonna keep pushing, pushing, pushing and push my goal to get, make sure that May, June and July are done by August 1st. I really, the August 1st release is supposed to be um, the specialty stuff like the beads and the, I don't know, petite treasure braid, all that sort of stuff. Um, 
So I really would like to be able to focus on that in August. I would like to give myself some grace and just have everything ready to go by August 1st so I can wrap this up right on time. All right. My next stitch along, the Christmas wreath by the Frosted Pumpkin Stitchery. So this, um, Recent, most recent clue was clue eight, which kind of starts with that little ornament and star and snow mitt. So I have completed this through clue seven. And darn it, we're gonna make this thing into a pillow when we're done. And I said last time that I was gonna get the fabric out and show y'all the backing fabric. So it'll have to wait till next time, I'm so sorry. But I did finish clue seven, which was Mrs. Claus and candy canes and lights and this time, I really, it took me a long time to stitch the green this time. I don't really know why. I kind of sailed through Mrs. Claus. I thought she was going to be an issue, and she really wasn't an issue. It was the, it was the pine needles this time. So, I don't know. It's coming along good, though. I feel glad. I'm caught up. I'm current, right? So, I'll have this next piece done before the next one releases. And, um, yeah, we're getting, we're getting close, like, this is gonna be a wreath before we know it, a complete wreath. So I've really enjoyed this one. This is, you know, you can start this at any time and if they release a piece every month, it's DMC, it's a really nice fabric. This is the kit fabric. It's 28 count picture this plus in the color Heartland. Yeah, so it's been really fun. I've really enjoyed it. My final stitch along that I'm involved in is by the Stitching Book Club. We are doing Little Women. We've already done Sense and Sensibility this year. And after Little Women, we'll be doing The Great Gatsby and then The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. So this was part one of Little Women. And the new, new part, I think comes out on July 2nd. So yeah, I was kind of in a crunch because I didn't start this until this weekend. So here we go. That's part one. It's a kit fabric. It's, um, I don't know if it's 28 or 32 count. It's an even weave and it's just kind of like a, a nice neutral tan color. Um, I had fun stitching uh, the thread and the needle and I really liked the colors when I started this. I really enjoyed this uh, green and purple at the top. It kind of made what we were watching on TV more bearable. <laughs> My husband was watching a show about um, abandoned speedways, like where they did stock car or no NASCAR racing or whatever. And um, they people, this TV show, they would go visit raceways that, you know, were abandoned and overgrown and um, talked about the history of racing and everything, which which is fine, but it's not really my thing. So, but anyway, I got a lot of stitching done during it because I didn't look up don't look up pretty much but anyway there we go little women yeah so that's coming along nice all right that is it for my stitch alongs um let's get started on my whips I feel like i'm moving along pretty fast today that's a good thing okay so first whips well this is a stitch along too but anyway this is a stitch along um halloween at hawk run hollow so I am stitching this with um, Bobby of Pumpkin Creek Prim, Sam of Sammy Liz, and Leanne of Leanne Stitches, also Forbidden Fiber Co. Um, we started this a few weekends ago and had a nice Zoom, and it was really fun to get to visit. And um, the hashtag for this is Halloween at HRH Sal, S-A-L. Sal means stitch along. Um, I love this one. I wasn't sure if I was going to or not, but oh, this one's fun. If I could just stitch on this one all the time, yeah, that would be pretty good. But I would, then I wouldn't get anything else done because this thing is huge. I was really wanting to try to get it all, get like a block done a month, but yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. But anyway, here we go. I'm not taking this one out of the Q-snap either because this fabric is so big. It's so hard to wrangle, but here we are. I finished the house, y'all. I mean, that was a lot of stitching in that house. Uh, I really, ha I really enjoying it. I really am enjoying it. Um, yeah, so I've got, basically, since you've seen it last, I finished the house. Um, did this and the flag and started a little bit down here in the graveyard. I was kind of asking asking my group 
where I should go next. Like, should I continue and do some, do the ghost and the other bat and the skeleton, or should I head on down to the cemetery? So, um, Leanne said she enjoyed stitching the cemetery. So I'm, I'm heading down towards the cemetery and yeah, it's great. This is on a 32 count picture this plus in the color Heather. That's really pretty. And this needle minder is from Cricklewood Crossing. Super cute. I love their needle minders. Ah, this is good. This is good. This is going to be so much fun. It lives in a, in a really cute Downton Abbey bag too. I love Downton Abbey. All right. My next whip kind of just came out of nowhere because I really hadn't been stitching on it. It's a little bit difficult for me to stitch on. It is Autumn Dream by, I always mess this one up, Cottage Garden Samplings. And this is my hashtag Stitch Asia piece um, that um, Abby Bella Stitches started, hashtag Stitch Asia. And uh, the designer of this piece is Asian. Her name is Vinny P.S. Tan and she is from Malaysia. So this is my um, Stitch Asia piece, hashtag Stitch Asia, that was started by Abby Bella Stitch. Um, here we go. Autumn Dream. This is so pretty. I didn't get a ton done. I mean, this is not very exciting stuff right here, but you can see it's the, it's the leaf and the part of the wreath coming down the side. The colors are beautiful. Um, it's a 36 count. This is a 36 count linen, color sanguine. Um, I stitched this while we were watching, I think it's Shadow and Bow on Netflix. Yeah, that was pretty good. It was pretty good. I haven't read the books, so, um, you know, I can't really, I don't have much input other than I enjoyed the show. So hopefully I'll read the books sometime in the future or listen to the books. But yeah, this is, this is, um, I wasn't really expecting to pick it up, but I just, I did. It was just kind of like on a whim and then I just couldn't put it down right away. So yeah, I made a little progress on that. So I'm glad that I got that back out. My next whip, the Robin Hood Sampler by Park Hopper Bart. <laughs> This piece of paper has seen better days, has it not? Um, I am turning this into a wedding sampler um, for my husband and I. You are able to customize your the initials and the date. And yeah, so I did get some work done on this um, on my anniversary date. Yeah, no, the day after I think I got it done. But anyway, all right, so here we are. Here's what we're looking at. This is um, called for DMC on um, 32 count. It's like a stone nougat color. It's a called for fabric. So I got a good bit done. I continued my border around and then what did I do? Ah, I got like right around this area and this diamond was way too close to golly. And I was like, what in the heck did I do wrong? And I thought at first, surely I did something weird up here. You know, I was like, I shouldn't have done that. I should have I should have slowed it down and done like a leg and then a white thing and a leg and a white thing so I didn't miscount. But I didn't miscount there. Actually, where I had miscounted was on these trees, <laughs> these big trees. I had added like three extra rows to the trunk. And so then that made my golly and the X's down to too close to the diamond. So I frogged three rows off my trunk and made some adjustments there and frogged my golly and restitched that. And then now we're back on track. So um, I would have been able to get quite a bit more done if I didn't have to go back and fix my boo-boo. But you know, with a border like this, I mean, what was I gonna do, right? So yeah, so let's see. I mean, I'm not halfway done, but maybe I'm like a quarter of the way done. Yeah. I love this one. So, um, Park Harper Bart, he has, um, his designs are available on Gumroad and Gumroad is a website where artists can post their charts, etc. And they do not have to charge anything for it. It's like pay what you like or pay what you can. And if you can't pay, you don't pay. If you, whatever you want to do, um, it's available there. So, um, he also has an Instagram account. So if you go to his Instagram account, I think he has a link on there to his gum road. So go, I'll also put it in my description box below, but yeah, I love this one. I love the movie Robin Hood. He has a lot of great, uh, Disney charts. I'm a Disney girl. So that's, that's been a fun stitch. My next whip. I started it, but I'm just going to put a disclaimer out here. 
I barely started it, okay? So this is Coffee First by Misty Purcell, Luminous Fiber Arts. This is a real, I think this one is so cute. Um, I was gonna try to get this stitched much faster than um, I am, but um, didn't really happen. That's okay though, I've started it, I've started it. So, all right, I'm telling you, I started it, <laughs> see? little start there so this is a 32 count dapple by picture this plus this border on this picture is a lot darker it even looks black and so this is definitely not black but you know it's kind of got that whole little tonal vibe going on so I think it'll be okay I think it'll just look a little different for the piece but um yeah so I've got some of the got started on the border okay not not exciting stuff but stuff that has to be done this is a cute needle minder kind of looks like a Tudor rose to me um I got it from our forest embroidery they have uh they actually have really pretty needle minders um and they're priced really reasonably so when I ordered one of my mini charts I ordered that as well anyway so I'll get some more progress in on this one at some point uh, it's not a rush so but I did start it, and I'm sorry for not taking it out of the Q-snap, but I don't really see much of the point in that. Okay, so I was watching Fawn and Marianne the other night, Sanctum Stitching, and um, Fawn had told me a while back that she also had this Mill Hill. Um, it's a red cap mushroom um, from the Autumn Harvest Collection, and I am attempting to do um, Mill Hill Monday. Um, you know, so my Mondays are getting a little bit... A little bit fun because I've got Mill Hill Monday, I've got Mira Monday. Mill Hill Monday I learned about from Janet Jabber, and um, Mira Monday is Cross by Floss Lisa. Lisa, why can't I remember her name? I love her. Um, so yeah, so she's do she's doing this Mira Monday thing. So um, Fawn asked me in the in their video what my progress was looking like on this little red cat mushroom, and here's where I stand. Let me get this bag behind us so you can see it better. Um, that's my funky excuse for a needle minder because I just didn't have one by me when I was working on it. But yeah, there we go. So I've gotten a lot done, actually. There's not tons left. See? Uh, no beading, of course. But I think I could wrap the stitching up next Monday if I work on it next Monday. But yeah, and this is my cute little Garon Toten Bags uh, bag that I've bought for my, especially for my Mill Hill Mondays, because they're, I mean, there are some larger than this, but a lot of the ones that I have will fit in this size bag. Perfect. Okay. Oh, I'm getting down to it. My next whip. So, um, Frogwarts year one. Didn't go to Frogwarts year one retreat last year. I am going to Frogwarts year two retreat this year digital retreat. I'm super excited. Um, I did get some work on this done before we got our Frogwarts boxes in the mail. So I just want to show you my progress. I will probably, I will not be touching this probably this month. Again, maybe next month, but yeah, super cute. So last time that you saw this, I had Wingardium Leviosa, Hedwig, and part of Hagrid's umbrella done. And so this last time I worked on it, I finished the umbrella. I did a few beans, Birdie Bots, ever, 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 every flavored beans, and I did the bottle of Fame. I am stitching this on the called for fabric, which is a 32 count vellum by Picture This Plus, using all of the called for fancy floss, and I am loving it. It's really fun to just be able to, you know, it's like, oh, I got a bean done. Oh, I got a potion done. That's been nice to just be able to, um, find those little victories in there. I am enjoying this. And my last whip was a new start. So it's not a ton done. Dogs of Disney Summer Stitch Along by Abby Sue Designs. I love it. And actually, so this is, this is as far as I've printed it, but we've got Stitch, Lady, Tramp, Percy, Dante, Nana and Bolt have been released. This is a free stitch along and the releases come out every Friday and Monday. So, you know, jump on, jump on the bandwagon here. Um, it, it's, it's really fun. Um, Abby, Abby Sue designs on Instagram. You can go there and she has a link. Um, it's also a 
Facebook group, Disney Dogs of Summer Sal. Um, if you have a question for me, you can just reach out to me on Instagram and I can send you the link if you can't find it. Um, I don't know if I can get that link in there uh, on this YouTube description. I might be able to, but if you if you want to join this and you have any questions about it, just, just yeah, just reach out. Um, or just go to Abby Sue Designs Instagram and, and, and she has the information there. But so, I got started on my favorite guy, Stitch. And I'm stitching this on, um, is it 32 or 28? Let me see. Mm, usually it says, I think it's a 32 count even weave by Fabric Flare. It's these little, with the real rainbow puppy paw prints. So cute. And um, this is a special needle minder, needle minder <laughs> done for us by Fangirl Fibers for the stitch along. You can find Fangirl Fibers on Instagram and Etsy. I will also link her information below. But yeah, that's where I got started on the stitch. I've got a lot to go and quite a bit to catch up on. But I just want to show you, look at all the floss for this stitch along. Oh my word, y'all. I mean, I mean, it looks like a hot mess, but the colors are fabulous. Yeah, yeah, really, really good. And it lives in my super cute Lila Styles project bag. I love it. I love it. So yeah, I'm having a lot of fun stitching this. Um, like I just got started, but I mean, it was, it's fun. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <clears throat> there are a lot of, quite a lot of fractional stitches. Um, so I was kind of grateful that I chose, um, I chose the even weave. Ah, speaking of fun Disney things, Anybody recognize this llama? So, this is my Cusco Co. And it says, like I need to read this, but Cusco's poison. The poison for Cusco. The poison chosen especially to kill Cusco. So, if any of y'all are familiar, this is um, a character from The Emperor's New Groove. And um, it makes me think of uh, Married with Stitches, Derek and Christian. They have a cat <laughs> named Yzma. Anyway, um, this is fun. I, I would link the, the person that made this cup, um, but they're not making cups right now. So I'm not gonna link that. Um, but great quality. If she ever does start making cups again, I totally will um, put that information somewhere. Yeah, okay. Um, so yeah, this is fun and I'm looking forward to getting busy and getting some more work done on that one. Okay, that is it. That is it for the whips today. Pretty good. I want to go into plans. I have some big plans and some haul because believe it or not, even though it's been two weeks, I've had stuff show up. So I have a good bit of haul. So plans. First of all, I want to talk about cross stitch camp. All right. So I already talked about cross stitch camp a minute ago. So I want to show you my cross stitch camp project for July. Sorry for the zip. I am going to be doing Tomb, Sweet Tomb by, I always, I always mess this name up, so that's why I'm looking. Fairy Wool in the Wood. Uh, my nice, sweet friend, Sam of Sammy Liz, sent me this. She's already stitched this, and when I get through stitching it, I will be happy to pass it on as well. Um, so, sticking with my, um, my Halloween theme for Cross Stitch Camp. This will be my July project. I'll start started on July first, and um, the not like I don't want to say prompt. Well, maybe it's a prompt, but anyway, in July you're supposed to choose um, and stitch something from a designer that you haven't ever stitched anything from before. And this is a new designer to me. I actually do have one of their patterns, but I haven't started it yet. So um, I'm going to be stitching this on a um, 28 count. Uh, Butter Crunch from Needle Bling Designs. Not really getting a good. It's a really pretty color. Yeah, I'm excited to get. Yeah, I'm excited to get started on that. That will be my July cross stitch camp. My other exciting July start is going to be with my friend Carrie from Three Trail Stitchers and Bobby of Pumpkin Creek Prim. 
on July 1st, we are starting Labyrinth Friends. I'm so excited to start this one. Um, we're gonna do a little Zoom to kick it off. We have not completely decided on a hashtag yet, although Bobby came up with a great one, um, Power of the Babe. And I think, I mean, I'm all for that one. We just have to get Carrie's input and see what she thinks. So um, yeah, I'm super excited to start this with them. This one actually, um, has a lot of a lot of colors. It's all DMC, but I mean, that's a that's a bunch of colors. Um, let's see. I'm gonna, oh, I'm excited to start this one to stitch this one. I'm gonna be stitching this one on Awakening, and this is um, by Be Stitch Me. It's a 20 count Ada. I actually didn't purchase this from Brandy. I purchased this from Annie Joyfield Stitcher. I purchased this from one of her D-stashes. So it's a cool piece of fabric. Really reminds me of the Bog of Eternal Stench. So I'm really excited to start it on this one and um, get to spend some time talking to Bobby and Carrie um, on, on the Zoom. That'll be fun. I'll be, I'll be Zooming with them from Iowa. So have to find a decent place to set up. I'm sure I can find a decent place to set up. <laughs> so those are my um, plans, kind of like in general plans for July. Um, but I'm also going to be doing Christmas in July. Um, so some of these that I'm gonna pull out, I haven't looked at them since around Christmas last year because I was a new stitcher and I just wanted to stitch everything Christmas. So, um, you know, I, they're in varying states of completion and the fabric's gonna probably gonna be a hot mess and all wadded up and everything like that. But um, yeah, so what I decided to do for Christmas in July this year was I would stitch on my whips that I had that were Christmassy, my smaller whips, because I've got a couple big Christmas whips that aren't gonna be in this rotation, and um, start a few of my smaller things as well, just to kind of give myself a breath of fresh air. So I'm probably gonna be doing about I think I had eight so I'm gonna be doing like two a week like one in the front half of the week one in the second half of the week and um, of course if I got something done before the second half of the week then I would just move on to it but I'm excited about it so let me just show you what I got here all right this was actually a whip go piece um, whip go is something is a something I've been on hiatus from um, it was started by Jessie Marie if Jessie Marie does stuff go check her out if you're interested in more information it's like a bingo board and you set your own goals and she calls numbers every month and it's wonderful I just haven't been following along very well the last couple of months so this one was actually one that was called last month so I'm going to get some time in on this but here we go this is by the tiny modernist it's a elf biscornu I've never done a biscornu before um, isn't it really cute though? So it's just, it's DMC. So I'll be using the call for DMC and it looks like I had some 14 count antique white A to pull up for it. I'm not sure if I'll stitch it on that. Um, cause I haven't started this yet. So we shall see. Anyway, that'll be one of them. Oh, uh, let's see this one. Oh yeah, isn't this a cute project bag? Oh, I don't know where I got it from though, sorry. Um, okay, this is the Mary and Minty, which was a free, a free chart from Brenda Gervais last year that she has. I, you can probably still get it on her Instagram. And oh gosh, I don't have a picture because it's just the pattern and uh, even though it's free. Oh, I can't show that. So um, I can just show you where I've gotten so far. Isn't that cute? Gotten a reindeer and some snow and some peppermint stripes, but it's got a Santa with a tree. I've got quite a bit more stitching left to do on this one. And I don't know because I wasn't using project cards then. I probably got it somewhere, but I don't know. This is a pretty small count actually. It might be like a 36 count. Smallish. I, you know, I kind of, 32 is my jam. So anyway, yep. That's one of them I'm going to be working on this month. Hopefully I can get some of these done. I don't know if I'll get that Biscorn U done, but maybe, maybe like this one I might be able to get done. Um, let's see. What's this one? Oh, 
This one, I actually started this one with my mom and my aunt and they completed it. It was a stitch along. It was the 2020 Prairie Schooler Santa. And um, I'm not been exactly wild about the fabric. And actually more than the fabric, I wasn't wild about the needle I was using. And then I was like, Sarah, seriously, what the heck? Just switch needles. The needle I was using was really sharp. It was more like an embroidery needle. I don't even know where or why I was using that needle. Anyway, I kind of like a fatter needle and it was like really thin and I think I think I hold the needle kind of hard and I was bending it a little bit. So I didn't enjoy stitching on it. Um, but um, so I have a good bit done, but here, here's where we are. Well, I think I'll be able to finish that. This um, this is a super cute needle minder from Abby Top Knot Stitchers. She was so helpful because um, when we started this stitch along, my aunt and mom weren't familiar with needle minders at all. So I ordered three needle minders from Abby and I was like, I'm gonna send these as gifts. Could you put them on something like, you know how they send you a needle minder on a card? Could you separate them and put them on like three cards so I can send them off? So she was so helpful and she did that for me. I appreciate that, it was really sweet. But um, yeah, so. I feel like I should be able to finish that one. Maybe. It's kind of a lot of stitching, isn't it? Yeah, and I haven't decided what order I'm necessarily going to do these in just yet. Like, I don't know. I've got to pick because um, I've got to start, well, at least two of them. At least two have to travel to Iowa with me. So, yeah, I have to make that decision today <laughs> in my uh, stitchy packing mode. Um, let's see, what's next? Oh, okay. Here's another one, um, Stitching Book Club, Christmas Carol. Yeah, that's that's the part one paperwork. I'm pretty sure I finished part one. Oh yeah, I did. Oh, and I forgot I had this needle minder. Isn't it cute? It's an elf needle minder. Oh, I love it. But yeah, that's where I got on that. So I wanna, I wanna finish this one up. That's pretty, I don't know much about it either. Actually, I made a project card, what am I doing? Oh, okay. This is on a 28 count Havisham by Picture This Plus. I didn't look at this good or I would have been able to tell that. It's using all the called for floss. It looks like, it looks like it's all DMC. So yeah. Anyway, that's going to be on my list for this month. Get that one done. Oh, and this one's gonna be a new start for me. I actually had this kitted up last year, but I hadn't started it yet. So it's so cute, I can't wait. This is Santa Sleigh Ride by Dames of the Needle. Sorry, it's glary. Let me try to take that out. Yeah, and, and this has a most random needle minder on it. It's got Alice in Wonderland needle minder. It wasn't coordinating very well, I guess, at that point. Okay, isn't that cute? Santa sleigh ride, the Dames of the Needle, which um, this is a good example of weird pictures and fabric because I was like, oh, it kind of looks pink, right? Right? No, it's not pink. Um, the called for is uh, milk chocolate. And I mean, there is a pink tone to it, but it's definitely not that pink, right? Yeah, but I'm excited. Um, I got all the called for floss. Let's see what we got here. We got a random Alice in Wonderland needle minder and a needle. But let's see, we've got Onyx, Wood Smoke. Oh, I like this one. Ohio Lemon Pie, Picket Fence, and oh, another Onyx. Oh, I have two Onyx. Maybe I need it. Okay. Yeah, so I'm excited to start this one because obviously I wanted to stitch it last year and I didn't. So I don't know how big it is. Let's see. Sorry, it's kind of like discovering these all over again. 70 by 70. So it'll, it ends up about five, five inches by five inches. So not very big. Yeah, I like that. Okay, and what else do I have here? Oh, Hot Mess Express is what this is. Do you, I don't know probably. Do you see all that mess? Yeah. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. This. I don't remember where I got this project bag from, but isn't it cute? It's Grinch. Okay. All right. So this, these are a couple of ornaments that I started. Yep. Let's see what we have here. Okay. 
So I started this one for my son. It was from the Christmas Ornament 2020 Specialty Holiday Edition. And let me try to find. Okay, Let's see if I can cover this pattern up somehow. This is from the designer Natalia Leneva. It's Polar Bear. That's what it's gonna be and that's where I am. And I did a little bit of fun stuff with this, if I remember correctly. I got a variegated, a variegated thread for this Merry Christmas that's in like the Aurora Borealis look. I feel like it was, oh yeah, it was. It was a Madras by Weeks Dye Works. Yeah, so I, I used a variegated floss for that. And then I bought a bunch of, um, I bought a bunch of Whisper. To do like the polar bear yeah so I heard a trick about the whisper which I'm glad because I have not stitched with it before but I think it was Julie from um, Kansas City Girl in Colorado World if you're not watching her watch her she talked about she got a tip from someone and I can't remember where this originated from that you would stitch like a regular DMC for your bottom stitch and then do your top stitches in whisper. So I'm gonna go that route. I think she might've used it on her Snow Queen Mirabilia. She might've used that technique and she said it worked. So, oh, see, I have another whisper too because it's like a bunch of different colors, but isn't that pretty? Yeah, I'm gonna make that ornament for my son. So I'm gonna get that finished. And then, oh gosh. <laughs> Here's another one I started, and I remember why I stopped this one. This is for my sister-in-law, or my brother and sister-in-law, and it's really cute. Um, they got a cabin up, in, and they live in Colorado, and it just it just seemed to really fit them. Um, but here we go. This is by, I'm going to show you the picture before, so you have something to look at, sorry. Um, who is this by? It's called Evergreen Santa by Tempting Tangles. I love Tempting Tangles. So no wonder I like this pattern. But okay, here's a problem with this. This fabric, oh, shoot, sorry. This fabric is so wonky. It's like a 28 count um, opalescent and it's white and it's pretty and it's perfect for doing um, Christmas stuff on. But uh, it's a linen and it just made my stitches look. Mm not so great like it's very uneven very uneven um but I, I think i can power through now i have a little bit more experience than i had last christmas and i can probably tolerate it a little bit better um let's see another one so this is must have been my um sarah put all the ornaments in bags that i was working on so if because uh, i've got and i don't think i can show these because they're patterns let me see if i printed a there's a really cute one by Hands On Designs. Berries in Bloom. That one might have been a freebie. I can't remember about that either. Um, and then I've got these little COVID nutcrackers. So basically a bunch of ornaments. Sorry, I can't show these because I got them on Etsy and I don't have like a, the picture is the pattern. So I'm kind of at a loss for that. So basically, if I get a couple of these ornaments done, I'm gonna be good because, oh, I also bought this one, Mrs. Claus by Auto Lane Stitchery. So, you know, depending on how fast everything moves along, I'm gonna work on the stuff in my ornament bag. And lastly, my last Christmas in July is super cute. And it was inspired by Fawn of Sanctum Stitching's husband, Sean, the what he was working on. I had this one, I just didn't have um, all of my floss bought for it yet. And this is what it is. My Chickadees by Valerie Pfeiffer. Um, this is from Heritage Crafts and I'm gonna flip it over and let you see this. So there's a lot of different little chickadee patterns. And actually, I think the one Sean's doing has like three chickadees on them. I just think they're so cute. But I think this one is super cute. And um, so I, or I got the floss for it. It's a lot of floss. I guess it's, I guess there's a lot of shading in. I'm gonna try to get it out of this bag. But I mean like, you see all this? Okay, this is like, this is like a 50 by 60 pattern and it's got like, Buku 
<laughs> colors in it. Um, I am going to stitch it on. And this is how, I mean, like, so this is, this is the size uh, that it will be. And this is giving myself a two inch margin, like all the way around two, you know, two inches on each side. So, um, it's not going to be that big for like this many colors, but I'm sure it will be gorgeous. And it is living in ah, this bag from Lila Styles. Um, it is like a Lisa Frank Christmas bag. Isn't it cute? I love it. Sam, Sammy Liz, she has the same one. We saw it at the same time and we we're like, have to have that for sure. So yeah, so that's, those are my Christmas in July plans. Um, and I'll just see, see how, see how it goes. But the goal is to like work on something in the first half of the week, then work on something else the second half of the week. And if I finish something early, go on and start what I'm going to start and just see what kind of progress I can make on it. So, um, especially with those ornaments. I kind of forgot I had so many of them jammed in one bag. Hot mess express for sure. Okay. Um, oh, um, other plan is this coming weekend is Blackbird Designs um, weekend stitch along. I did not bring that one by the camera to show y'all. Um, but I, I got good progress done on it last time. So I will work on that over the weekend as well. I'm doing Summer Jubilee by Blackbird Designs. It was in that Souvenirs of Summer um, book that I've showed. I, I think I'm pretty sure I showed it last time. If you just really needed to see it, um, you can go back to my last floss tube and check it out. Otherwise, um, you'll be getting an update on it in a couple weeks when I show it again. Yeah, so that's plans. So yay, thanks for sticking with me through all of that. That's a lot of stuff going on coming up. And um, for two weeks, I think I stitched on a good amount of stuff. I feel like I did. Um, so I wanna show you some haul and then we'll get out of here because I have got to pack. I've got to give Winnie a bath because she gets to meet my mom and um, stepdad for the first time tomorrow. And I want her to be perfect when well, she is perfect, but you know, I want her to be all smelling good and looking super cute. Um, so let me go over my haul. Hmm. I got two boxes. So in the last couple weeks, it's been a very exciting last couple weeks. I got the Frogwarts Year 2 Digital Retreat box and the Bridgerton box. I'm going to leave those to the end just in case you guys have seen them already and you aren't really interested in rehashing those again. So I'm going to get into my haul that's not a box related. Um, also plans wise, um, hmm. let me let me stop for just a second. My plans for Frogwarts 2 Year 2. So that retreat starts like with troubleshooting stuff next Wednesday and it's like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday is the retreat. Um, I was really happy um, on this past Sunday to get to Zoom with everyone. I got to meet or uh, meet Athena from A Stitching Goddess um, on the Zoom and Katie and Laura from Black Needle Society, which Athena's Black Needle Society too, um, because we did like a little troubleshooting, asked questions about the stitching challenges and everybody was so patient and nice to me because um, I was trying to, so I started off on my phone, but on my phone with the, the camera, I could only see, I think seven people plus me. So like eight people on my screen and there was at least like 20 people in there. And I really did want to be able to see more people. Um, so I was like, okay, I'm going to try like a tablet and they actually have had some problems with people using their iPads. So I had this Android that I only bought to use for a pattern keeper. Um, I don't even know what brand it is, or I don't know that it's like a super reputable brand. It was just cheap and, um, I need it for pattern keeper and it works for pattern keeper but when I got it in the zoom it was giving a bunch of echo to everyone and I couldn't it was lagging and then I couldn't see every it was just it wasn't working well so I thought well I'll try the iPad so I charged my iPad and updated it and updated messenger and then I didn't have the rooms as an option um, which they said has been a problem with the iPads in the past but um, Katie figured out how to send a link. So I might try to use that when we're actually doing the rooms just to see if I can see more people. If not, I'll use my phone. It's not the end of the world. I was just trying to get it figured out. But plans wise, whoa, this retreat has taken a lot of planning. And I mean, I'm, I'm all about the planning, but let me just, this is our schedule. Okay. And like, <laughs> So it's so great though, like, you know, what time you're watching what show, what time the chat rooms are open, what time the stitching challenges are, what time the stash dive challenges are. The stitching challenges are pretty intense, y'all. Um, like, it will say, all right, so the first stitching challenge. 
know if I can say this. Can I say this stuff? Basically though, I, okay, so they listed out these stitching challenges and like for the first challenge, I have to stitch on a whip that, um, or yeah, stitch on something that has a dessert in it. Okay, and I've got to get like as many stitches as I can get done in that hour and then it gets points for our house. So I have to find something with dessert in it. I have to find something with spiders in it. I have to find something with rocks in it. Like it's this huge, it's a big, it's a big list. So I sat down and planned out what I was going to pull everything from. Unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do very much stitching or retreat stuff on that Saturday. My husband's sister's coming in town and we're supposed to have a little cookout. So, um, I am going to miss some stitching time on that Saturday, but it has been, it has been fun. Tiny bit of stress planning, but it's, it's going to be, it's going to be great. I've never done a retreat like this before and I'm super, super, super excited. So sorry, that just kind of was some plan situation. Um, all right, back to the haul. All right. So yesterday I had to stop by. My LNS to get a few more floss. And there's something else I got from them last time I forgot to show. So I'm just gonna show you. I picked up some floss and then, you know, I've been eyeing Thomas for a while. Tom, I love Not Forgotten Farm. You know, I, I could have ordered him about 20 times when I made other orders, but he just called my name yesterday. So there's Thomas. And not in particular for Thomas, but I always kind of take a peek at the fabric and, um, you know, see what I might need for my stash and um this time I went with a 30 count R&R &R linen um R&R &R, and it's prim green and oh it's a pretty color it um it's pretty I know it's not coming through it, it really is pretty um I was thinking about using this for I have that I think it might be from the Cricut collection. It's like a skeleton ship. I don't know if any of y'all have seen that. And I think that the linen that it's called for is like salt marsh or something like that. And I feel like that might be a hard linen to find, but I thought this might be a good option. Or I might do a floss toss and try this for a new chart that I just got that I'm super excited about that I cannot wait to stitch and hang on my wall, but I'll get to that in a minute. So that's why I have this. And also, I guess I didn't show y'all this before. I don't think I showed y'all this before because for some reason it was like sitting in the bottom of my haul basket. But this is another R&R &R that I got. Not this visit, but a, a while back. It's a 32 count. Um, it's called Green Tea. Isn't it pretty? It is much softer than this prim green. So I don't I don't know why. But yeah, it's, it's pretty too. So I like the R&R. &R. It's really, really nice. Nice, nice. So, I didn't do too terrible when I went yesterday. Like I said, I had to just pick up some DMC. So, I got my, I got an Al Forest order in. <laughs> so, yeah. I don't have a current, um, anything from Al Forest on order. So, I'm fairly proud of myself because, uh, they just came out with, like, these super cute snails. Yeah, they're really cute. You should go check it out. Al Forest Embroidery on Instagram, or you can just go to the website. Um, but anyway, I have been wanting this um, Claire of Stitch Lit. She stitched this, and I have had my eye out for this ever since I saw that she stitched this dinosaur forest. And I don't know if there are any more kits available, but there were when I ordered um, last month in May. Yeah. So, also, when I ordered Dinosaur Forest, I couldn't resist this Bounteous Autumn. Look at that. I love, I love fall, so this one just struck me as pretty, pretty, pretty. Of course, I'm not starting these until I make some progress on my other Owl Forest. What else we have in here? Uh-huh. This is the June bag. Ooh, maybe you haven't gotten yours yet? It's almost July. I bet you've gotten it. <laughs> so much to love June bag. Isn't it cute? It's like all these little houses at the beach, which um, I think are like pretty popular. And there's a UK vlogger that I watch and she goes to the beach and she, they have little houses like this on the beach. So cute, I love it. And I think my favorite part about this bag is I have to show you the inside. It's always worth looking on the inside on these, but you see that? Look at the seagulls in the clouds. I love this. This one is so cute. Um, every month when um, she always puts extra goodies in here. 
And I think I heard someone say that she might have some spots, bag of the month spots open. So I really enjoy getting these every month. It's like a little treat to myself because I don't know what's gonna come. I know I'm gonna get a nice bag out of it, but quite often you get like an exclusive chart like this one by Hands On Design. Isn't that cute? And what else does she put in here? Um, usually a little sweet treat. So this month we have saltwater taffy and a tea, elderflower citrus. And a really cute needle miter this month. It's a little wooden uh, needle miter. It's a beach ball. Yeah, cute. Beautifully made bags, beautiful. Like I've bought many of her bags, um, so much to love. Even, sorry, dropped my teeth. Even just outside of the bag of the month club. All right. Okay, this one I kind of lost my mind on. I'm just gonna be honest because There we are, Dimensions, a Christmas stocking. Um, so I have a knit Christmas stocking my grandmother made me. And my mother made my kids knit Christmas stockings. I cannot knit. I have tried to learn a few times. Hopefully eventually one day I will be able to. But my husband does not have a knit Christmas stocking. And my husband's Christmas stocking we call it the Grinch stocking. Because to be fair, he can be kind of Grinchy. Um, and it's like... <laughs> The color of the Grinch and it's like fuzzy and um fairly hideous but it's the Grinch stocking but I figured you know it's probably time now that I do some sort of needle work that I work on making him a uh, acceptable Christmas stocking so I thought that one was cute it was on sale on one two three stitch <sighs> I don't know when that's gonna get started I mean it is Christmas in July so I could but um, I don't know how, how long does it take people to stitch these? Because there was actually a, a, a mother of uh, one of a volleyball player that my daughter played volleyball with and she was making one for her older daughter before I knew anything about cross stitching. And I would see her like at, during every practice, like sitting there stitching, stitching, stitching. And I always be like, oh, kind of curious, like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, that looks so pretty. Cause it was really pretty. But I feel like she stitched on that thing for forever. So I'd be curious to know, has anyone done one of these? Not, doesn't have to be this one in particular. And like, how, how long did it take you? And I mean, did you have to make this your total focal, focal piece? And um, yeah, any tips or tricks or hints? I would love, love, love to hear it. I already got a really good tip um, from Bobby, not Bobby, Ugh, Billy, Billy up at Stitchers. Um, because I was asking her, they have some up there, and I was asking her, did she have any good information about that? And, um, oh, can you see the reflection? Yeah, you can see the reflection in it. Okay, um, and she said to make sure, all right, so go, whatever direction your toe points, like, you know how normally you might count in like, okay, here's this, here's this side, and I'm gonna count in like 10 stitches or something from my margin, and I'm gonna start. And she's like, no, don't do that, because then you won't have room for your toe. So I'm gonna start from the side, the opposite side that I don't normally start from, just so I make sure that I've got enough room for my toe. Because she said it has happened before where people have stitched, and then what would you do? I would die, oh my God, okay. Anyway, so yeah, got that. So I would love to hear stocking feedback if anybody gets a chance. Another cool little thing I got from 123 Stitch when I ordered that what is this little um, chart clip. Uh, I had um, Steph on Just Keep Stitching had talked about this. These are super, super inexpensive. And I had one before and actually I was a little bit too rough with it and I broke it. I mean, I think they're like three bucks. So, you know, it, it is what it is. But what I used mine for was, you know, I'm doing so much owl forest. And like I talked about before, the patterns are really large and they send you that extra pattern with the little scissors where you can cut out individual sections that you're working on so they're nice and blown up and large. So I would cut out the individual section and then get a piece of cardboard so it kind of wouldn't flop around or whatever and clip that onto my chart. And then I would just have it like big and in my face and this little cut out piece. And it worked out really well. I just was a little bit too rough with it. Trying to do some, I don't know what I did. I pulled it apart, tried to put it back together and I broke it. But anyway, three bucks. So that was good. Um, I did, I did, I did buy some bags from Carolyn's Stitchery um, in their recent bag sale. And I love them and they're beautiful. And um, yeah, I'm not 
that's all right because they're so pretty. Ocean Treasures. Um, even though there wasn't a stingray on there, I kind of bought it because it just reminded me with all this marine life of our recent trip to the beach. It's beautiful, right? And they're made, they're, they're just so well made. Yeah. I love them. I love them. This one is probably my favorite. It's Aborigine Animals. Look at the kangaroo. I mean, it's so fun. So fun. And the koala. Yeah. Sometimes they have a few bags left, Um, like on Sundays. You can all look at that. Woo! Nice. Yeah. And the last one I got was this mandala one. I thought the colors were really pretty on it. It reminded me of fireworks almost so I'm excited it's got a really bright inside too so I love those I love those what else do we have here mm. okay so my summer punch needle and primitive magazine came in there are a million flip throughs out there, so I'm not gonna do a flip through. Um, I had actually been receiving this subscription digitally. Um, and after watching Steel City Stitchers, Kristen talk about her subscription, I switched to the print version for a couple of reasons. First, there are so many in here that I always wanna do that I was, you know, just printing a lot. Um, and then I felt like I just, even though I was looking at it online, I wasn't like, I just, I like to, I wanted to look at it in my hands. And if you buy the print version, you actually have access to every other edition that they've ever done as a PDF, like a digitally. So when you buy a digital version, you're, you have access to that, that current subscription and the year prior. But when you buy the print, you get them all. It is a heck of a deal because she has she has curated top notch designers and and charts for these things and um, yeah my favorite one this month is the Barbara Anna and I have I like a lot of Barbara Anna I have never stitched a Barbara Anna let me see if I can find it you possibly have seen it on other floss tubers channels because it is very popular. Um, Sorry. She is she's like a mermaid. A mermaid on a dandelion. And I know it sounds weird, but it's really cute. Alright, let's see if I can show you this. Like really cute, right? Really fun. Yeah. So this magazine. Is great and it's like really nice quality magazine too i was happy to get it in the mail all right let's see. um i didn't show these last month you probably have seen these this was may's fabric of the month i don't know why i didn't show this fiberlicious lavender mist isn't that pretty um and this is stonehenge by b stitch me those were May fabrics of the month. I don't know how I missed those. Oh, yeah. And then I found a new um, needle minder person. Her name is Kim. Um, and she has a Facebook group, Needle Attractions. And, yeah, she has lots of needle minders. And they're really priced good. And, um, yeah, they're, they're great. So, these are really kind of cute. They're like Magic Kingdom transportation tickets and a Luna Love Good. What else do I have here? You know, I was trying to figure out what needle minders I wanted to use for my frog warts. So, and that was a freebie that Casper. And yeah, she has more than Harry Potter. She has tons of stuff. I was just trying to, you know, be prepared for the digital retreat. See what I wanted to have. All right, what else do I have? Almost done. Oh, 
When I ordered my bag from Garon Stitchery, I also ordered this piece of Kermit by Picture This Plus. Um, I do have that chart gone batty, and I'm not really sure who did that one off the top of my head. But um, Kermit is the call for color for it, and I know it was hard to find, so I saw that on there. What else do I have? Oh, if you haven't gotten your June Fabric of the Month from Brandy yet, be Stitch Me. This is um, Neptune. It's pretty. Yeah. And almost done. Okay. So, these were... A Where did I get this one? This is a chart I was talking about that I'm just dying to get on my wall. I think Michelle Bendy showed this. Um, it's a Serbian proverb. It says, be humble for you are made of earth. Be noble for you are made of stars. I love this. So I've got, to, I've got to, I mean, it only calls for, you could do it with silks, but I'm not. Um, it only calls for five colors. So I need to find some fabric and get that one going because I want that one on the wall. Um, I did get this at my LNS sometime a few weeks ago. Gosh, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> this one, a hands-on design. Lick the bowl. Isn't that cute? It's cute. Yeah. Life's short. Lick the bowl. And also another one I picked up for my LNS. Oh. Heirloom Harvest. This was only like six seventy five. dollars It's a Mill Hill. It's got one, two, three. I, I don't know. It's got it's got multiple patterns in it. It's probably got I don't know. Three or four. Oh, see? You see all that that's in this book? It's amazing. But I like this big one on the front. So this is a like not now. This is a someday. This one's going to be getting done. I did buy the treasures for it already. Two little squirrels that you kind of choose between. They didn't have the exact squirrel. I don't really like squirrels that much. I was telling Terry, but she found me two squirrels. And um, I don't like squirrels because they chew your wires up in your house. Otherwise, they're fine. I mean, you know, and I, of course, I know they're outside. And what are you, you going to do? But I really don't like the destruction that they can cause. Um, but um, anyway, she found me a couple of squirrels. So when I get to that point, yeah. And then... This was kind of random too. I ordered um, from, I've wanted, been wanting these two charts from By the Bay Needle Arts. So I went on and got these as well. First one is Halloween Cove. Look at those pumpkins. They're amazing. So cute. And the other one, go figure. Christmas Cove. Yeah. I ordered those from um, her Etsy store. She was super helpful. Okay. It didn't take too long to get here. All right, let's see. Okay, so that's it for the regular general haul. I do have a couple boxes that I'm going to briefly get into. Um, I probably won't go super in depth because there are a lot of unboxing videos out there. In fact, let me just send you over to Mary Ashcraft's channel. Um, she did two separate videos, of uh, two separate unboxings. One of the Bridgerton box by Forbidden Fiber Co. And the other one of Frogwarts Year 2. And she goes through everything bit by bit and they're delightful to watch. So, um, actually, I'm just going to send you over there. I did get the Bridgerton box. I love Forbidden Fiber Co. Leanne, they did a wonderful job curating everything. Um, super cute spoiler card. You know, it starts off like, good day, gentle readers. The cross-stitch community is abuzz with the latest gossip, and so it is my honor to impart to you this season's delightful Bridgerton cross-stitch treasure trove. I mean, like, attention to detail, this is great. The chart is wonderful. Um, they did some, just Leanne did something really cool. So she did this um, chart in, um, in black and white, and she's packaged all of her specialty floss in these envelopes and so I don't I haven't opened them because I want to surprise myself and stitch as I go and be like oh what color is this oh what color is this this is so fun it was a great 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 idea it just makes it a little bit more exciting um 13 days of Halloween her um Halloween box is out for pre-order now still I believe I ordered mine you might want to order yours um so far I will say 
the treasure troves, the boxes, the kits. I've been so happy with the quality and the content. And I don't really think you can go wrong with the Forbidden Fiber Co. Like they're knocking it out of the park. I mean, I just, this needle minder is like a little cameo, y'all, with a button on the back. Like it's super cute and it's got cuticle cream and some fancy scissors. And oh, look at these, um, oh, look at the thread drops. They're like Lady Whistledown thread. And the fabric is, is really pretty. It's really pretty. It's like rosy and opalescent and yeah. So I'm just saying like lots of lots of stitchy goodness in there. Lots of stitchy goodness in there. And like I said, if you really want a good a good overview, go check out Mary Ashcraft. She took care of business on that. The other one is Frogwarts Year Two. I have never gotten a Black Needle Society box before. This thing is massive. It is packed to the brim with goodness. Just, just look at this pillow cover. It's at the burrow. Look at this project bag. First of all, it's Gigantor and it's a Mandrake's having a party and I'm a Hufflepuff and I'm in greenhouse number three. So I'm involved in the party. I mean, we've got tea, cups, headbands. Um, oh, like this, this stuff was packaged with these fancy seals and, and thread drops and needle minder needle minder with our name on it needle minder from um charm school abby rosen charm school with like the spiders in it and then you put the sticky thing in here and then you can put your beads and it's a needle minder and you can use your beads out of it abby rosen is charm school yeah i mean like what else is in here i don't know oh this soap look at this rubber ducky soap it is a mr bubble scented and on the bottom it says what exactly is the function of a rubber ducky of a rubber duck and that's what mr weasley says he's asking harry that when they're having breakfast in the morning at the borough because you know, he's like you know what's his department a uh, misuse of muggle artifacts or whatever yeah i love it i love it so this is great okay the box is great i'm so excited for the retreat i cannot even stand it um i will show you the year two band sampler which we were allowed to start on the 27th and encouraged to start because if you finish the chart stitching the chart during the retreat you get like a hundred house points but like bobby said that she heard you have to I was stitched like 900 a day. I don't think I'm going to make it, y'all, because I haven't even started yet. Um, but anyway, here we are. Look. So cool. Chamber of Secrets. I love it. I don't really know exactly what my favorite part is. I really like Colin Creevy's, um his, his camera over here. I, and I really love the Flying Ford Anglia. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm so excited to do this retreat a lot of people that I know a lot of people that I know that are helpful posts so I'm looking forward to getting to chat and zoom with everybody and stitch 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 and it's gonna be a fun time so yeah that's all my mess I think that's everything oh my goodness yeah so um I'm at an hour and 20 minutes again and it's been two weeks so I don't know that's a lot that's a lot but you know thank y'all for uh pushing through with me. Like I said, if you really want in-depth review of these boxes, head on over to Mary Ashcraft. She has, um, um, she's done like little small snippets of, of both of the boxes. Um, I really appreciate y'all watching, um, subscribing, liking, commenting. I love the comments. Um, so fun to get good comments. Um, if you have feedback for me on stockings, I would love to hear your feedback before I jump off into that deep, deep ocean. <laughs> Um, what do you think about my Christmas in July stuff? Um, are you looking forward to seeing any of them get completed in particular? Um, do you have questions about any of them? Not that I seem to know too much about what I put up last Christmas, but, um, yeah. So just thanks for watching y'all. I'm really excited to be going to Iowa to see my mom tomorrow. Um, it's been a year since I've seen her. Thanks COVID. <laughs> uh, no, I'm lucky I get to see her. Some people can't even see their moms anymore. So, um, but I did realize that I've never gone a year without seeing my mom. So, um, 
I am really, really excited um, to see her tomorrow and um, spend some time up in Iowa. The weather's supposed to be nice. Um, the small town that they live in does like a really small town 4th of July. So they have flags everywhere and they have fireworks and a parade and it's a big community event, which they weren't able to have last year, obviously. Um, so I'm looking forward to that and visiting the Stitchery Nook in Osage. Hopefully they'll be open and I'll have some um, stuff to share with y'all from that visit, I'm sure, if I get to go. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching. Keep enjoying your summer, and um, I'll see y'all next time. Bye.